Hey everyone, this is Feeding Master Kosti Kovitsky here once again for Chess.com and today I'll be doing part one of a new series showing you all of the highlights from the recently concluded Tata Steel Super Tournament held in Wykonze, or uh, the Netherlands. And the tournament in Wykonze is an annual event that is pretty much the first super tournament of every year. It always takes place in January, and of course it was the first tournament of the year 2014. And a lot of big names participated. Uh, Levon Aronian, Hikaru Nakamura, Fabiano Caruana, Sergei Karyakin, as well as a number of very strong 2700 plus grandmasters. Aronian actually ended up winning the event, which was around Robin, scoring 8 out of 11 points. So he really dominated the field, he won by a wide margin, and um, he showed some really, really strong chess. So I wanted to start off this highlight series by showing one of his nice wins. And here he's playing black against the Cuban GM, Linier Dominguez Perez. And this position came from Arui Lopez. And the main positional feature here is that white has the two bishops, which are normally an advantage, but not so much so in this case. And the reason is that the center is fairly blocked, and white's bishop on a2 in particular is not a very impressive piece, sort of firing into its own pawn on d5. If we can imagine this d5 pawn being back on e4, then I think white would have a pretty serious positional advantage because the bishop on a2 would be a monster on the light squares, putting a lot of pressure on f7. But because the pawn is on d5, I think black's position here is definitely okay, if not even slightly preferable. And here Aronian played the move f5. And his idea, which we'll soon see, is to expand in the center and activate all of his pieces very quickly. Lanier played bishop b3, improving his bishop and opening up his rook along the a-file. But this actually turns out to be a slight mistake, and he probably missed Levon's next move, which was e4. And this is a very strong idea, and it's basically a positional pawn sacrifice, with the point that after d takes e4, black will play c4, blocking out this bishop for good. In anticipation of this move, probably white should have played something like queen h3, getting his queen away from the attack of the e-pawn. But after bishop b3, e4, now it was really important for white to simply play queen h3 and not accept black's pawn sacrifice, which ended up to be quite terrible for white. And here after queen h3, probably white can fight for equality, but after something like e takes d3 and queen f6, I think black is certainly much more comfortable here than white, even though the position is probably still defendable. I definitely like the activity of, of black's pieces here, and white has a couple of weak pawns. The bishop on b3 is still not that impressive, and black's next move could be something like rook e8, knight e5, and, and black definitely stands very comfortable here. That said, that was definitely the preferable route for white instead of the move d takes e4, which is actually playing in the game. So Aronian played c4, his idea, bishop a2, and now queen h4, and all of black's pieces are coming to life, and meanwhile white's bishop on a2 is stuck on the queen side, and this turns out to be pretty much a deciding factor in the game. So checkmate on h2 is threatened, and a nice tactical point to Aronian's play is that the move g3, which seems very natural, would actually be met with the move knight e5, counterattacking white's queen, and getting ready to eventually jump this knight into the f3 square where it will pretty much fork all of white's pieces. For example, queen e2, black can even play queen takes e4 with the idea that after queen takes, f takes, white of course cannot take this pawn because of knight f3 check winning the bishop. So let's say rook e2, black here has a pretty substantial advantage because this bishop on a2 is simply shut out of the game and all of black's pieces are very strong. So going back to this position, after queen h4, we have seen what would happen if white played the natural move g3, and so Lanier decides to give the pawn back and play e5, which is probably the best move here. Black took with the bishop, g3, and now there's no knight e5, and here Aroni decided to play queen g4. And in this endgame, he correctly judges that the bishop on a2 is still a very bad piece, and this endgame... It's going to be really, really pleasant for black and probably close to winning. So 
The rook on a1 is attacked, white played c3, with ideas of not only blocking the bishop, but also perhaps getting his own bishop back into play through b1, which is definitely the correct strategic idea. And Aronian realizes that he has no time to waste, and he played bishop f6, preparing to perhaps put the knight on e5, followed by f3 or d3, some really nice outpost squares for the knight. Bishop b1. And now the white's pieces are definitely lacking coordination. Aronian plays b4, of course, taking advantage of the pin on the c3 pawn. White played rook e3, defending c3. Rook ad8, simply getting his last piece into the game. And bishop f5. And now white is very close to equalizing the game because now they have ideas of bishop e6 check. And perhaps the d-pawn can become a factor. So black really needed to play precisely here in order to keep the advantage. And I think actually Ronin didn't play the strongest move. Probably the best move here would be to move this knight to either b6 or c5. Let's say for instance knight b6 is quite a nice move because the d-pawn is going to be lost and it seems like white's position is basically falling apart. He can throw in this check, king h8, but it doesn't look like white has a way to really defend this d5 pawn. And next, black is going to play b3 at some point and create this really powerful pass pawn on the queen side. I think a move like knight c5 could also be considered quite strong with very similar ideas of eventually playing b3 and controlling the e6 square. And I think white is in very serious trouble here. Black is pretty much going to be crashing through on the queen side quite soon. Instead, after bishop f5, Levon chose h5, which I think is just playing it maybe a little bit too safe. He defends his g4 pawn, gives his king some extra breathing room, but I don't think this was really necessary. And then Nier played the move rook d1, and this was probably a mistake as well. I think white maybe could have had some chances to save the game with a move like bishop e6 check, king h8, and rook e1. And the idea here for white is to try and play d6, and perhaps bishop takes c4, and try to solve his problems through very tactical and dynamic play. But indeed, after something like b3, black would definitely have the better chances here, and if Levon continued to play like he played throughout the rest of the tournament, he would more than likely win this game. Throughout the tournament, of course, Aronian displayed some very fine endgame technique, being able to win all kinds of endgames with the smallest of advantages, and in this game, in this position, I think black's advantage is definitely pretty stable. The knight is still coming to c5 and d3 at some point, or even grabbing the a4 pawn, and I think with accurate play, Aronian would definitely be able to win from here. Nevertheless, this would have probably posed black some more serious problems, because what happened in the game was after rook d1 and b3, the game was more or less over because white just isn't able to come up with any kind of counterplay. The rook would have been much more active on the e-file where it can control more squares and, and pose more serious problems for black. So Dominguez played bishop c1. This was, I guess, his defensive idea to try and control these squares and defend the d-pawn. But after bishop g5, Aronian found a really good time to simplify the position and is going to pretty much win the c3 pawn after the dark squared bishops get traded, as we'll see in the game. Bishop b6 check, king h8, and rook e2. And now Aronian follows up with his idea and plays bishop takes c1, rook takes c1, and knight c5. And basically he wants to win this game very slowly, but, but really methodically. He's going to eventually trade his knight for white's bishop here and go into a completely winning rook end game where his rook will get access to d3, and he'll simply win the c3 pawn and then his c and b pawns on the queen side will be too much for white to deal with. And here there's really not a whole lot white can do to, to deal with this threat, and, and the position is pretty much lost. The game ended with a5, rook f8, king f1, g6. Black can take their sweet time here because white basically has no counterplay of any kind. Rook e1. King g7, he's simply going to put his king on f6, trade everything on e6, and win due to the pass b3 pawn. Lanier tried one last trick, d6, basically hoping for king f6, bishop takes c4, after which the game is more or less becoming complicated, but of course Aronian saw that his 
that his c4 pawn was hanging and instead opted to trade everything off rook takes e6 takes 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 rook d7 and the game is over white has a pass d pawn but black's b pawn is obviously superior in that it's defended and supported by the c pawn and of course black's next move is king f7 after which the white rook will have to move black will take on d6 and have the completely one rook end game and the game concluded rook e8 rook takes d6 rook e2 and rook d3 and here white simply resigned as he can't defend the c3 pawn and black's pawns are simply winning the game so a really nice win by Aronian who displayed some very power positional play leading to a superior endgame which he then converted with basically fairly fairly strong technique activating all his pieces getting his pawn to b3 and then simplifying and, and trading into this completely one rook endgame. Thanks a lot for tuning in and watching this video on YouTube. If you want to see the rest of the video, then do head on over to the main site, chess.com, sign up to be a member, and then you can watch the full feature length video. But otherwise, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.